2015. Thanks for joining us, everybody. This is Films Against Humanity. I'm Chase. Kendall. Nick. I'm Chris, and joining us for his first guest appearance, Mark. Yep. That's right, we, we're doing a Make-A-Wish. Yeah, <laughs> Mark is here because he wanted to be on uh, a podcast that no one will listen to. Well, you get you get better stuff for Make-A-Wish if you have cancer, if you if you just have herpes. This is about as good as it gets. Uh, you can go. Well, <laughs> still, we're going to make your dream come true today. All right, so we watched Biggles Adventures in Time. Okay, so this movie is based off a, a a chill a boys adventure novel series from England in the '30s called Biggles, who is the titular character, and he's a World War One like pilot, uh, dashing spy, and he's got a crew. Uh, the author was named W. E. Johns and died in 1968, but there were almost a hundred Biggles novels. There have been uh, comics and there was a TV show. There was a video game of Biggles. is a huge deal. So let's let's see what plot. happens in Biggles. So we start out shots of '80s New York City. Awesome title, Biggles. Laser print. Awesome <laughs> coolness. We get to meet our main character. Does anyone know his name? No. No, no because it doesn't matter. You know his name? He's uh, home. Oh yeah. Uh, he goes home. Peter Cushing comes to the door, uh, looking much older than he did in Star Wars. Naturally. Uh, this was Peter Cushing's last film. Mm. Oh, that's disappointing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Everyone always good. goes out on Rest a bad, in peace. I know. On a bad no, note. Sure. Like, I'll tell you what. I'm very busy, and I don't know what you're talking about, so why don't I just go, okay? I'm sorry to have troubled you, Mr. Ferguson. Oh, we'll say Jack. He, um, he works at... Celebrity dinners, which oh, is a we're getting which right is the to best it. thing to come out of this. Yes, mm-hmm. the most interesting thing in the movie. It's like a microwavable TV dinner that has pictures of celebrities. So as you're watching the celebrities, you're eating the celebrities. And is that the ma- maybe <laughs> that was the quote, but the, yeah, you know, maybe it comes with a with poster. The, you yeah, see, you see cardboard so. stand-ups of like Arnold they Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger. They, they never Eastwood. explain it, so it's just a. Uh, there's a lot of we spend a, a lot of time, the most exciting time, like <laughs> yeah, from watching this, just trying to figure out what the celebrity yeah. dinner was. Because yeah, there's lots of standees and posters of celebrities all over their huge office. Uh, well, so they yeah, must there's be doing like really marble well. columns and bunting. They but all it is all is just a, a hungry man dinner. It, yeah, it's fried chicken, mashed potatoes, and like corn. So or like maybe yeah. the card, maybe the cardboard casing folds out into the said celebrity, and that would be that would be really. And cool. the what meal, if it's like it, their face, and you can put like a mask, you know, like yeah, cut out a mask. Yeah, and and that the meal was the as that, that celebrity's favorite meal, so you get to eat like the celebrity. And that was my yeah, first like, thought. The Hoover stank pancakes. Yeah, exactly. Hoover stank nachos. Who offers that? Denny's from Denny's. That's like the most depressing. thing. I've ever heard. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look it up, but I, I saw this on the internet the other day. There's a company that um, I guess they're gonna take uh, some sort of tissue sample or blood sample or something from celebrities and then uh, clone it in a lab and make uh, meats and stuff out of it. Oh, so Jesus. you could eat a little bit what? of uh, Lady Gaga oh, or wow. whatever. Holy shit. I'll, I'll look it up. <laughs> That's there. really pretty fucked up. They just so left they, to they, cannibalism. I they know. just totally mm-hmm. ripped it off. <laughs> from Biggles Celebrity. Adventures yeah. in Time <laughs> and said let's take this one step further for the 21st century so he's really worried at Celebrity Dinners mm-hmm. um, because they have a new they're having a party he's a like a food party. critic maybe is there, there might be something to do with Starlet Snacks to munch a Starlet tonight I believe okay. that's a whoa <laughs> side <laughs> alright so right, another day. Mm, not much nose Consumers want a lot of no's in their dinner. We'll certainly work on that. Basically, for no reason, no apparent reason, uh, some 80s lightning comes Jeez. and he gets sent back to 1917 and we meet the titular character, Biggles. You again? What the juice are you doing in my plane? I don't know. 
yeah. Yeah. has no interest that he's back in time. <sighs> oh, he man. Yeah. Okay, this guy, Kendall, yeah. Okay, this guy, I feeling. have the biggest problem with his acting because he just... Quotes and quotes. <laughs> yeah, I, acting. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's not really uh-huh. acting. Because he just, like, stares uh-huh. so stupidly at everybody that he's talking to. He just gives, like, this non-acting, like, asshole face to everybody. And everybody's acting mm-hmm. so hard and trying to work with this guy. And it's just nothing. He gives them nothing. This is very awkward. Peter Cushing was pretty good. He, yeah, actually. oh my god, it, was he, kind of sad. it must have been really tough. Yeah. <laughs> this him. guy's kind of like maybe a Ryan Gosling. Where I wrote that just, down. Uh, not story really talking. <laughs> it felt like yeah. Drive, it, but done terribly. doesn't I say anything. I wanted to punch him so hard in the face just to get a reaction from him. Like, I just wanted to just, ah. Uh. So, so he's back in 1917. Yeah. World War One is in full force. Oh, it's blazing. Um, the Biggles is a big uh, pilot, and he's fighting yeah. the Huns. There's a he's guy in an iron mask he's fighting. Uh, yeah. yeah, like sort of a World War One Red Baron... Wore a gladiator's mask, which is pretty tight. Yeah, it was random. pretty cool. And I wrote, uh, it's pretty sad when you're watching these pretty well shot dogfights, and all you want to do is go back to the 1980s and see more about the celebrity <laughs> dinner <laughs> stuff. So much. Can I say, yeah, so they had real planes for all this, because I'm sure they didn't have special effects, really. Um, and, like, the pilots did pretty cool stunts. The helicopter stunts were impressive, from what I can tell. And, like, the World War I stuff was pretty well done. Like, the trench scene, they had a ton of extras. They had the costumes. There was, like, bombs. And it really seems like the world... It was like they had a World War I movie that somebody said, this is fucking boring and there's been a million of them. Let's put in a goofy time travel twist. Yeah, it's kind of unfortunate that they had to do that. Mm-hmm. Well, they didn't have to, yeah, <laughs> but they sure did. But, yeah, it was. it's definitely, like, a showcase for aerial stuntmen... And yeah. helicopter pilots, because they would they would show them in long sequences of dogfights and. Movies. Uh, I just want to skip to the end of this movie because nothing. <laughs> no, happened. we're not skipping. Just, sorry. So just to hit the highlights. So you meet Peter Cushing, and then after a couple times of going there, he decides to go to Peter Cushing's house, which is in London Bridge. In the Tower of London Bridge. Yep. And uh, he goes looking like Isn't Indiana that a museum? Jones with sweatpants. <laughs> yeah. Right? The blue sweatpants. Uh, Into P- Cushing's lair, surrounded by World War One memorabilia. And he's a got a raven. Or, yeah. <laughs> Crow or a raven. He's got but big... he's not the bad guy. No. But he is not. They even cool. shoot him from Dutch angles, like the Batman tilt yeah, angle. Yeah. <laughs> All the time, as if he's some sort of goofy horror villain. Uh-huh. But what Keep... we do find out about Peter Cushing is his part of his one of his connections to Biggles and the story is that he is part of the special air police mm-hmm. because he has a business card that says that. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's their so that was their exposition for why he takes everything in stride and knows when and where everyone's going to be. Yeah. And he was like the captain to Biggles at the time, yes. which when also he was young doesn't work. Time wise, because Peter Cushing, if oh, this takes on. place in '86, there's no way. I mean, he'd have to be a hundred to be a captain in the 1917s. Yeah. he looked pretty old. Yeah, mm. he was like 80 when it was. Shot. That I don't know. that didn't bother. It's me. all right, whatever. Um, so yeah, he was Biggles's commanding officer, his beloved commanding officer mm-hmm. of Biggles and and the Motley crew back in World War One. And, and it's like a do- it's like a Doc of, Brown thing. Yeah. He goes to him the minute of. He, and he's like, uh, well, he knows when it's 917, yeah. right? And the guy's like, yeah, I believe so. Get out of here. And he was like one minute earlier or something. It yeah. Incredible. yeah. But he got all of that just from Biggles giving him Jack's biz- celebrity dinner's business card. Yep. Mm-hmm. And he connected the dots. Go back to present London and... <laughs> we go back and forth so many times. Well, it, it just keeps doing it. And his girlfriend, who also works at the company... 
And the we only comic find out. relief fat bumbling, uh, yeah. bumbling idiot, fat dude. man. Uh, and there's well, beard man. And there's yes. beard man, but he doesn't go because he has to run the business. I don't know if he ever talks. <laughs> so, so they go and they see that he's dressed as a woman or he's dressed in a nun's oh, robe. Like a nun's so, so the fat guy's like, oh, this guy's completely crazy. I'm going to call the police on him yeah, and say that my friend thinks that he's a nun or something. So and for some reason, the police the fucking come. riot the squad. Police come and they arrest the fat guy for calling this in, gun straight to his face, holding it up. We um, don't know why don't they really arrested why. him. This is another dangling plot point. It's illegal to be fat in London. Yeah. Maybe. But as they're arresting him, they're, they're taking him out of the hotel or whatever, and what happens? So right. Jack is back in 1917 again for maybe the seventh or eighth time, mm. and all the Germans are coming, and Jack gets out a machine gun and starts shooting and hitting all the Germans. Man. Murdering the Germans. No blood, but just murdering them. And then... Bam, it cuts to present time, and he's just mowing down bystanders. <laughs> bam, 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 killing all these innocent police officers. He's Shooting up cars and stuff. We don't actually see him killing anyone, but it's to be assumed ostensibly, he probably ostensibly. murdered a lot of people. That was one of the most like exciting edits. Probably the only exciting part, because it actually got us, you know? Yeah, I was not expecting that. I really do have to stress again how fucking messed up it is to me that he goes back in time. I think the first time he doesn't do much. He meets Biggles. But the second time, he's like, I guess I'm in World War I. The, uh, Biggles is like, come with me, because he just assumes he's a another officer or whatever, a Yankee officer. And he just starts fucking shooting Germans. Yeah. Like, this guy who was just at a party in the 80s at his company <laughs> without any emotion oh, on his yeah. face just With goes into that same ass vacant look that he pulls it's, this whole movie it's psychotic he well, is a psychopath maybe, you, maybe you know it was the 80s right so they were probably doing a lot of cocaine at that <laughs> party true. and you, true. Just, true. you find yourself in the trenches <laughs> true yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Stuff. It's weird. so that's because he's Biggles time, time twin yes and that's the, the, <laughs> the crux. only explanation you're going to get on why he goes back in time. Does everyone have a time twin? One throwaway one line. Twin? Yeah. Why does Peter Cushing know about time twins but no one else? Uh, none of this it's is explained. It's incredible, yeah. But if you do hold on to him as the lightning's coming, you go back in time too. Like his girlfriend finds out. Star Trek teleporter rules. Yep. They get in some more fights, and they're testing the sonic Sa- weapon. Sound weapon, yeah. Sound weapon. The Germans and, are. Yeah. Yes, the Germans. yes, yes. They have what's really more of a Nazi shtick, you know, where they're well, not, they super the over the top super weapons. Mm-hmm. And I guess they were just like, whatever, yeah, any Germans will do. <laughs> so they have this really anachronistic weapon. When and, people were fighting on fucking horses. And for some reason, the sound weapon, like, destroys everything. Melts. It turns metal it just, yeah. into, like, clay. <laughs> it turns uh, clay into metal. Into something else. Yeah. yeah, into glass. And for some reason, the girlfriend decides it's cool to um, pull out the eyeballs of one of the one of the Germans to fuck your face. Well, she... do you remember the part where he also, like, everybody's against having this girl here, his girlfriend, and then his only... Explanation. His only way, like, uh-huh. oh no, guys, it's okay. She can fight. Listen, she can fight. And everyone just is kind of like, okay. okay. Uh, she and she can. Fight. And she but can. she has mace. She, she has mace. mace. That's Fair it. Enough. She doesn't really fight. She just pulls that guy's eyeball out. When he's already dead, yeah. and yep. gets that nasty stuff on <laughs> That's her. It's real love. unnecessary. The girlfriend responded with a little more realism, where she yeah. was like, well, she's slightly actress, surprised to so. have gone back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she might be a little bit more. Um, prone and of to... course, she was just kind of a damsel in distress, but still, yeah. at least she was freaked out that she was in World War One. Well, yeah, all of a sudden, yeah. World War One. So this is when they both go back into the future. When Biggles finally makes it to the eighties. And um, the police helicopter is chasing them. They steal a police helicopter. And on the yeah, most unnecessary, happen? it was just parked for some reason. 
the most unnecessary <laughs> stunt scene. They get into the helicopter, but Jack doesn't make just decides doesn't to make hang it on. In. So he's hanging to the el- helicopter when he had enough time to get in. There's no reason why, mm-hmm. and he just hangs there for a while and then just climbs yeah, in. And, and this is after Very low this speed. is after when him and Bickles get in. And Biggles says, well, what is this? It's a flying contraption of yes. some sort I've never seen before, but it can't be that different. Yeah. Yeah. A biplane. Yeah. Yeah. And he, then he masters it. He's like a Black Hawk seconds. Down pilot. He's doing like 360 takeoffs, you know, <laughs> just skims, flying in, like, yeah, yeah, skimming, the, skimming the, water the water. Going underneath the bridge. Uh, mm-hmm. He's a pro. So nice. they go but back in the past with, with their super yeah, with helicopter. the helicopter yet again, right? <laughs> and they use the speaker on the helicopter, the loudspeaker, to the destroy ball. the weapon in the most annoying sound. This hurts your ears. Yeah, just for some reason that works. And then that's the German the weapon. We gotta get that love story tied up. She, she was a German spy, I believe. Yes, Mar- she, she was, no, she was a German spy, and then she went to the other side because she fell in love with Biggles. With Biggles. So but she they're in shot. love. She yeah. got, she got uh, shot, shot by the Red like Baron. Like in the neck, maybe? Yeah, I, I think really, so. I would assume it's like, Like yeah, the shoulder the neck, neck, neck shoulder and region. everyone was riddled with bullets. You know, Either way, flying. everyone reacted to her as dead. Yeah. She died. She so dies. we're like, what's gonna happen if she's dying? Maybe she'll go back in the future and or to the future, and they'll have the medicine they'll or the me- technology oh, yeah. Yeah. to save her life. That would have been clever and interesting. No, nope. nope. I would have loved that. She that just wakes amazing. up. <laughs> she didn't fine. even just no, 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 uh, not, not they, just. They take her in the church She's and then they corpse put, white. Play, yeah, they place her down, and then all of a sudden, light shines in oh, God through, through the stained glass window. Through the stained glass window, shines on her, and all of a sudden, it wakes her up magically. She's alive. It again. wakes her up. It's, yeah, it's so bizarre. It was no really attempt weird. to explain it. Like. <laughs> <laughs> and does does Biggles even go over to her at that point? I don't remember. Oh, yeah. And then it cuts to a wedding scene. Yeah, just because you have to the end the movie with the story wedding. Right. Of the girlfriend who we thought was a co-worker for most of the movie. <laughs> I know. And they didn't have any the romantic. Romantic. The fat uh, comedic relief. That not, fat fuck. Yeah, that fat is fuck. Is the best man. <laughs> is the best man. Who loses, of course, of course loses. He doesn't have the ring. In his pockets that are filled with candies and chocolate. Oh, so much candy. <laughs> Loose jelly beans. So what does he do when he finds the ring? Oh, my God. He takes the wedding ring out of this garbage from his pocket, <laughs> sticks the ring in his mouth, and then just, like, sucks on it, and then hands it to Jack to give to his, I guess, his now bride. wife. And... Oh, I'm sorry. If I were her, I'd be like, no. As he's putting it on her finger, zap. 80s, 80s space 80s lightning. Yeah. Spins yeah. you, sends you back in the continuum, and he's where we called him being. Yeah. He he's guys in Papua this. New Guinea, right? I believe it's like 10 years later, and Biggles and the team are on another fabulous adventure. Mm-hmm. Oh, so they are all tied up in a pot. The, a cauldron. A big <laughs> iron cauldron. cauldron. <laughs> They're tied Kate, up like a cartoon. Surrounded cartoon-y. by headhunters. Yes, by mass. super stereotypical <laughs> headhunters. They they just watch him. He non- him nonchalantly <laughs> saunters over. And undoes their bindings. And they the head just watch him until they're all out of the cauldron and running away. And then, then they start yelling and chanting and throwing spears at him. Well, someone made a Doctor Who reference. And to be fair... Very yeah, Doctor Who. Very Doctor Who. Yeah. Very reminds me a lot of Doctor Who. But... You know, like it in the, yeah, but in the like, '60s when Dr. it was cheesy yeah. had and it was charisma and just, <laughs> there's some ideas like, behind yeah. it. None of these guys do. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Doctor Who. So, do you, would you guys recommend this movie? No. I think I would. It was painful to watch, but <laughs> <laughs> every, every everything everything we have done is like if you know you're going into something stupid. There was like there was a lot of. St- Stuff going on, you know. There was flying. There was men melting in an igloo. Uh, planes, like if you watched this movie on double speed, it would be perfect. But there's so many movies that that you know, like I said, did the same thing but did it better. And so when that happens, why not go see those? I would have loved if we'd watched Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom instead of this. I mean, yeah. Yeah, because I don't recommend this movie. No. It's maybe the first one I didn't recommend. Really? It's pretty bad. I think one of the worst moments for me is that um, they start playing Another One Bites the Dust, 
and get about five seconds into it and then just stop. And it really... It's very it's curious. Real dick tease on that. There's a kind of sequel to this where the same actor plays Biggles, but he's not called Biggles. It's like a Biggles ripoff, and it was like produced by the Pet Shop Boys, right? Uh, Kendall, would you recommend this? Um, yeah, I would. I think just some moments really just echoed in my brain for a very long time after watching mm-hmm. it. Just like certain scenes are pretty cool. Yeah. As a whole, like this movie sucks. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, let's with really that. All right, we're done. done. That's it. All right, well, as we said at the beginning, happy 2015. No, 2015. We're, we're going to we're going to do a lot of movies this year. This is our first going to be our first full year of of uh, the podcast. So we're going to be trying a lot of new shit. Yeah. Um Remember to follow us on Facebook at Films Against Humanity. Can people uh, write in and say, do this movie? Or... Request? Yes. Oh, yeah, yes, this totally. was our first request. Please. Our first requested well, movie. And we would love for you to write in. Filmsagainsthumanity at gmail.com is our email address. So write into that. Tweet it. Tweet, Yo. It. tweet, tweet us at Films Against. We're getting a big following there. Um, the website's filmsagainsthumanity.com. Mm. And just, just anyone that's watching these, thank you. Because yes, if you're watching this, thank <laughs> you so much. You. We hey, appreciate does, it a lot. Does Sam watch them? I, yeah, maybe. Thanks, Sam. Sam. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Sam. Hey, Sam. Sam. Just great for you. <laughs> yeah, this one goes out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to dedicate this to Sam. Sausage guzzler. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> what? Oh, that was oh that was the, that was the line. That yeah, we didn't go over, we didn't go over of, any of the was like one like of the key liners, lines. Was sausage garlic, which was well, my, my personal my favorite. My key line was she "Munch of Starlet tonight." <laughs> that was the one. She can yeah. fight. Was that <laughs> she can fight. I, yeah, I don't know. Like the evil German to show he was evil when they first meet him says that choir practices cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's pretty true. I think we all just need to pick our favorite one. <laughs> oh boy. All right, All right. thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Bye.